Today's guest is someone that started a business about eight years ago, and it, it's, it's a gentleman that actually, we've known each other for, I guess, a handful of years, but just officially met on the golf course uh, a couple of weeks ago, yes. and, and he, he's, he's someone that I was very interested in bringing on, and it was just kind of, uh, it's kind of neat to, to, to see him on the golf course, and <laughs> I said, listen, I'd love to have you on the, on the podcast. I think your story would be a great one to share, and uh, now he's here, Pat McIntyre, welcome to, the, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I wanted to get into really how you started in the trades. If you can just go back, you know, 18, 19, whenever that began and, and why you chose that path. So uh, I graduated high school in 1996 from Washington High School in Philadelphia. Uh, it's a public high school, nothing special. And um, I went to college for a semester and it just, it wasn't for me. Um, and I knew a gentleman in the Glaciers Union who offered me an opportunity and I went and filled the application out. And I, and I, after my first semester was done in December, he put me to work uh, January 2nd of 1997. I started my apprenticeship. So it was almost 24 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I went to work for a pretty large company for my first year. Um, and I just kind of fell in love with working on my hands. And then I worked for another company for about 14, 15 years. And then that's when I went out on my own. And what companies were you working for? The, the I worked for a company called National Glass. National my Glass. First year. Yep. And then I worked for Rabinowitz for about 15 years. Okay. I know both of them well. I've done business with them. Good yeah. companies. Yeah. No, no hard feelings, nothing like that. Just, I wanted to try something on my own. And mm -hmm. so uh, eight years ago, me and my wife, um, decided to take a plunge and took every penny I had and invested in, you know, my own company. I rented a, ran on my first uh, garage and bought one van, traded my truck in and yep. worked by uh, myself my first two years, about 24 hours a day. No, I love it. And, and I love the name Synergy. Um, it's synonymous with teamwork and collaboration. Um, it, it's, it's a great name. Yeah. Thank you. Great name. Two, two elements coming together. Yep. No, I love it. And, and before we get into, you know, your, your, your business, you know, growth and specifics about your business, what, what were your roles, you know, as a glazer, talk about a glazer and what a glazer does and, and your role specifically at national and Rabinowitz. So at national, I worked in the shop as a, like an apprentice uh, industrial worker. So we would cut the metal, fabricate the metal, build the frames. Um, at the time we worked on our project, Bailey's consider down the shore, mm -hmm. make all the frames and glaze them in the shop with glass and all the metal and doors and we'd ship them out and they would install them. Um, they got slow and I went to, that was during a day and that night I went to work for Rabinowitz. Uh, Rabinowitz was completely different. They did like plate glass and service work and then they started getting new construction. And my role there was at the end was I was one of the foremen. I was running some of the bigger work, mm -hmm. a lot of exterior work, a lot of curtain wall. I never did any time in the office, just mm -hmm. down the field. Mm -hmm. um, but it taught me a lot. So. Mm -hmm. And and when did you know you wanted to do something and go out on your own? Was it was it early on? Was it? Do you know I, when that? I always wanted to do something on my own. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I wanted to do, um, but I, within like. Two to three years of me leaving, I knew I needed a change in my life. Mm -hmm. I, knew I wanted to go a different direction in my life. I wasn't really going anywhere there. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I could do more in my life. And yeah, basically be challenged. You want to be challenged more. I want to be challenged. Yeah. 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 And I kind of gave up there. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I, to I totally get that. For sure. Now, you know, you took your, basically your, your craft, you, you know, you learned, you learned the business pretty well. You said you were out in the field. Mm -hmm. So starting your own business, who, obviously you said you started with your wife, as far as the, the office piece, was your wife handling that? Did you, wh who was your first hire to, to help manage the office? So and my field? first hire in the office was, um, uh, Rob Ziggler, which is my project manager. Okay. So, when I opened this company, I did my first job uh, 
almost eight years ago, July 1st of 2012, 13. Mm-hmm. Um, I did everything. My wife handled the billing. I handled all the estimates, the measuring, the fabrication, the install. Literally, I was working a full year before I hired anybody. I was setting 300 pound glass doors by myself. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, I, was, <laughs> I remember waking up at two o'clock in the morning one day and I was sitting on the edge of my bed and my first, my daughter was in a crib and she was about one and a half at the time. Or, and I looked at my wife, they're both sleeping. I'm like, I got to be insane to do this. <laughs> like, it was like, it's good. I didn't have a choice but to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, so then I asked this guy, Rob, to come along with me. I, well, first I hired a glazer to help me out in the field mm-hmm. into my first year. He would help me do doors and stuff like that. And I got to the point where I couldn't do both. I couldn't do the installs and project manager. So I hired Rob as a PM and Rob started project managing, estimating as I was doing the installs. Mm-hmm. And we just kind of built our team from there. Got it. Got it. Now, did you question yourself at all? You know, when you, that first year, second year, did you, did you think about going back to putting well, the tools on and there's 365 days in the year. I probably thought about it a thousand times. Like, my crazy? <laughs> you know, I do. I, I could be like, I'm watching everybody else go home at night as I'm getting ready to start my yep. seventh job at night. Yeah. Um, I remember I was doing service work. I went to work for, uh, one of the gentlemen, one of the buildings I working and I walked in his office and he gave me like six service jobs, like fix a handle, fix a lock. And then uh, Rick Cron at Patriot Glass gave him, I mean, Patriot Construction, sorry, gave him my first new construction project. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, I said, can I got to do service tour today? Can I do the glazing here at night by myself? And I remember the elevator was broken. I literally carried every piece of glass up the steps by myself, worked till one o'clock in the morning and then went home, slept two hours back up doing service work and go back at night doing the construction. Mm-hmm. So it was, uh, I'm very thankful for uh, everybody who supported me in the beginning. Yeah. So you're eight, eight years in now. Are you getting much sleep these days? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> different matters now. Yeah. Um, I get to sleep. Yes, I do get to sleep. I mm-hmm. After the last few months, I've had like some stress in my life, like bad. Mm-hmm. And uh, I actually hired a personal assistant to help me take a lot of that off myself because I do, I still project manage. Okay. I still go meet with everybody. I still measure. I still order. I still run work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have 11 people in the office now here, mm-hmm. but I still run my own work. Right. Yeah. How many total, how many total staff do you have like field and office? Uh, right in the mid thirties. Okay. 36. That's, that's, that's a very, very nice size, man. Yeah. Very yeah. Nice we're getting frame. there. And, you know, I just hope the world keeps going the way it's going right now. Construction has been very good to everybody. And so, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's, that leads me to COVID and COVID-19 and the opportunities that presented you as a glazer. I, I can only imagine it, it really opened up doors. You know, I see that you're doing, you're doing board ups, you're doing plexiglass type protection. You want to talk a little bit about the opportunities that COVID had offered? Yeah. So we were doing a job at uh, University of Penn when COVID hit and it was literally, it was a Friday, that Friday mm-hmm. night, they came in and shut everything down. So that Monday, everybody was sitting at home, all my guys. And I remember walking to a supermarket. Let me back up for a second. So that Friday night, I said, okay, everybody just go home on Monday. We'll figure out what we're going to do. We'll go from there. We'll see what's over because it was the world of the unknown. So my office staff and myself got together on Monday. We talked about different things we can get done and places we could work because we were we were an essential trade because Synergy Glass is a 24-hour business. Mm-hmm. We do emergencies. We handle some of the bigger accounts in the city. So we're essential. So we got our permit. I walked in a supermarket and I saw a piece of plexiglass on the register. Well, as I'm standing in line, I called a friend of mine. I took a picture of it and I said, I can, say, I can do this. Within a minute, he's like, can you do all my seven supermarkets starting tomorrow? So I have a couple of contacts in mm-hmm. Plessy Glass World because we do it. So I, I bought like, I probably bought almost a thousand sheets right away before it all got sold out. We brought it in the house and I bought, I bought heat benders. I bought routers. And as of today's date, we're over 6,000 pieces of custom made Plessy Glass. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then um, 
like on all the offices, like your cubicles, they're like up four feet. Some people wanted glass. We started adding glass. So we, I probably hired an extra six guys just to handle plexiglass. glass. That demand. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, and then obviously the riots hit and we mm-hmm. did over 600 board ups mm-hmm. and now we're still fixing the glass. It's yeah. Yeah. No, I I saw some of your social media, you know, posts and yeah, I saw you were, you were busy, man. 24 seven. So I'm very thankful for the work, but to be honest, I would give it all back to go back to normal to see people being back to normal again. Yeah. Probably back to normal because I don't like this. I don't like the direction it's going. I want to see it go back. No, I get it. Yeah. I I agree with you. How about, how about Delco solutions? Do you have a partnership with them? do you want so, to talk about how that came about? So Delco Solutions uh, is my brother-in-law Kevin's company. Mm-hmm. Um, we do do stuff with them. He does the back of the house, the wiring, the uh, wireless keypads, uh, projectors, and we do the hardware installs. Mm-hmm. Um, so they handle anything internal from like Saltos locks. So we'll go install the lock and then do all the wiring, all the computer work all projectors, security cameras. So uh, we have a great partnership with them. Uh, it's, they, uh, they're they a great company in what they do. They really and, and as it relates to COVID too, what, what specifically services are they offering? So they're offering... Um, Through uh, you, of course. The, the cameras, mm-hmm. offering the heat, the take the temperature camera. Yeah. They're offering that. So it all ties in. It can all integrate in our system. The unlocked doors, um, it can enter. So also when you walk up and you got to swipe uh, uh, automatic operators. Mm-hmm. So when they walk up, instead of us putting a push button on, they can wire it so they can walk up and swipe it so nobody's touching anything. No touch. Got no it. Touch. Yep. No touch. Yep. No, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I can see that going going, uh, going uh, pretty far with, with what's going on. Mm-hmm. The demand that is, and then the last few months, I uh, we started doing all our window tending in house too, as well. Okay. So I, which is which has been great. No, oh, excellent. Talk about a little bit about the the apprenticeship in in the Glazer unit. If someone wanted to get into the Glazers, what's the process? What's the apprenticeship like? Sure. So I actually sit on that board. Um, for their apprentices, um, to craft committee, pre- uh, glazing advisory committee. So what you do is you go online to FTI, you fill out an application. Uh, once your application is brought up, if you meet all their requirements, they call you in for an interview, come in and do your interview, and then you do a drug test. Got to make sure your transcripts, clean license, um, and uh, it's something you want to do. So, because being a glazer, this isn't a job, it's a career. I mean, once you start it, you got to be dedicated because, you know, you're a glazer, you're making great pay, you're getting a pension, annuity, medical benefits, taking care mm-hmm. of your family. So, uh, right now you go in, you do a class for 12 weeks straight, and uh, they teach you how to cut glass, they teach you how to handle the uh, leadership, they do a week-long leadership class. Great. Uh, they teach you how to fabricate books. The best thing about our apprenticeship now is we're the only one in the country, as of right now that I know, of when you graduate your apprenticeship program, you actually graduate with a college degree. Love we're, it. We have our own accreditation now. Excellent. Yeah. And what and what at college is that? Was it is you said it was a union? College? They had their, well, I have I got mine from um, uh, West Mount West. Mount West. They, yeah, they actually have their own credit. They actually have their own mm-hmm. accreditation program now. So okay. You graduate, you actually graduate from the ST, FTI. Okay. And where is the your local union located at? The union hall is 2980 Southampton Road um, in Philadelphia. And the other one, and their school was over on Horning Road, which is a mile away. I'm not exactly sure exact address. Okay. It's over 80,000 square feet because we partner. Our Glazer Union is part of the IUPAT, which is uh, International Painters and Allied Trade. So it's a painters and it's tapers. Mm-hmm. Got it. And what's your servicing area? Is it primarily uh, Philadelphia, Metro, South Jersey? 
yeah, so we'll, we'll go to Cape May, we'll go to Wildwood, mm-hmm. we'll go to like Princeton area, we'll go to Allentown. I'll go pretty far in Delaware. Um, I've done a couple jobs in New York. Uh, I've done jobs in Secaucus. So we'll, our main area is Philadelphia, Delco, South Jersey, Monco, uh, but we will travel, definitely. Okay. And, and I know you're a 24-hour service company. What, what would you say from new work versus service work? How, how would you differentiate the percentages you know, in your business? About 50-50. 50-50? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I have two full-time estimators uh, mm-hmm. for new construction and two full-time project managers for new construction. Okay. And then service work, I have myself and two other full-time project managers just for service. Got it. And is it is it primarily commercial? Do you do residential at all? Or nine nine percent of it is is um is commercial. The only residential I do is like like you know like Miranda and great people at Stonehenge. Um, and we mm-hmm. like manage their we take care of their buildings, their glass, their mm-hmm. sliding glass doors. That, like you guys were doing the deck up on the roof, and we did the steel doors. Yep. Um, so that's the only basic residential we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Got like it. If, if they call them like a shower door or something, we'll do it. Mm-hmm. No, understood. And just to talk a little bit more about all the things that a glazer does. I mean, architectural metals, custom mirrors, storefronts, entrance doors and hardware. Uh, you're, you're even doing tabletops, glass tabletops, correct? Yeah, all in-house. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, obviously the repair of, of existing um, products that are in your in your jurisdiction, is there anything I'm missing? Like, what else? What else do you guys do so we, people we do understand? Skylights. Like mm-hmm. we do the re- so if you look at Liberty and like, and you look up top and you see the guys changing the glass, they're actually Synergy guys doing it. Okay. So we do skylights, we do mall fronts, store fronts, curtain mm-hmm. walls, uh, custom vents, um, all new construction up to like almost. We would do probably up to a three million dollar project for the right client. Mm-hmm. Um, we do schoolwork. We do a lot of schoolwork, uh, a lot of punch window openings. Um, mm-hmm. We do a lot of uh, um, like internal uh, interior fit outs, like a lot of Wilson wall projects, Rayco projects. Uh, we just finished a seven story building uh, with Patriot Construction, all new Wilson wall mm-hmm. throughout the whole place. Uh, great project. Um, and then the service work, we do anything from a to Z for we'll do anything from a hundred dollar job up to a three million dollar job. Your handles broke, locks broke, glass broke. We also stock glass in house. So if your glass mm-hmm. and your door breaks and safety glass, I stock a few hundred different kinds of glass here. You call me, we cut it, we'll install it the same day. So no, excellent. There's not too many companies that that offer that 24 hour service. Yeah. Like one stop shop. We just bought our 13th truck too. So Oh, wow. That's yeah. a nice fleet, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you have any regrets choosing your path in construction? Like, was there anything you would have done differently? I would have done differently. Uh, <laughs> that's a hard question. Um, probably not. I wasn't the smartest kid growing up. That's why I really didn't like college too much. Yeah. Um, I just... I just like working with my hands. Mm-hmm. My dad was a uh, union operating engineer mm-hmm. and uh, I just kind of followed his path. You know, the union uh, growing up provided mm-hmm. roof over her head and food in her mouth and medical benefits. And, um, if I was going to do college, I figured out how, how am I going to mm-hmm. take care of my family? I remember being 19 years old, say to my friends, oh, I got a pension. And they're like, you're 19. What do you need a pension for? Now I'm, 43 yes. years old and I got like mm-hmm. seven more years left. I can go pension, you know? Yep. And that pension keeps growing, man. Yep. Yeah. Nah, that's a, that's a, that's a great. So your father basically introduced you to, to the unions. Mm-hmm. Uh, got it. So what, what, what do you, what are you passionate about outside of work? Hobbies, uh, any, anything new that you're. My kids. Yeah. I have a little girl, mom, and my wife, Danielle, um, my nine-year-old and she golfs and does softball and very cool they're like my life i like to golf a little bit outside of work i wish i got better <laughs> I, I, can hit the ball, I just can't hit it far straight um that's it i just like going home and seeing my family and chilling out you know mm-hmm. I, like to, I like going to the shore i like the beach 
So mm -hmm. I didn't get that very much this year. With all yeah. stuff going on, but you know. I'm sure that's that's a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah. So what what do you what like new projects do you have going on? What what what's getting you excited? Um, you know, something new that you have, a project that's that's coming, one you're working uh, on. So um, we we got awarded the glass out front of City Hall, the big glass ramps that take you to the subway. Mm -hmm. They broke nine pieces uh, going into uh, right down the subway. So um, I got offered to bid on it. So I went to a friend of mine, uh, Ronnie Kudla, who has advanced glass. I asked him what he thought about partnering with me because it's not the easiest job in the world. Everything's all custom. Mm -hmm. And we were awarded the job a few weeks ago and it's nine custom pieces of glass and it's all from, it's going to be crazy. I'm not sure if you guys know the glass ramp. We got to move, remove the lid. The glass is five layers thick of half uh -huh. inch. Yeah. It's not going to be the easiest project, but it's going to be a fun project. I'm excited about that one. Okay. Um, I'm excited about a couple of jobs. I can't really talk about a couple of school projects come up next year. Okay. Um, uh, one projects like, we got like almost 400 windows in, in like nine weeks. Okay. Um, what else? Um, I'm excited about new challenges with coming up and what the new world is going to bring. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, hopefully we see light at the end of the tunnel after 2021 and, you know. Yes, this will pass. This will pass soon. It always yeah. does. So back, back to jurisdictional work. I uh, just wanted just to be clear. And uh, this will this will be edited for the pauses. So don't don't worry about that. Um, the uh, Glazer's jurisdictional work, it's it's anything aluminum base, right? Frame. Do you get into stainless stainless frame at all as well? Yes. And, and how does the jurisdictional work just touch about the jurisdictional in comparison to like carpenters work? So people can understand like hollow metal framing would be carpenters. So everything glass should be done by a glazer. In my mm -hmm. opinion, everything raw glass should be done by a glazer. Um, hollow metal steel frames. We do them at Synergy as replacements. We'll go out and replace our steel door, rip them out. We don't install them new normally. Mm -hmm. It's normally done by the carpenters. Stainless steel brake metal work, we do. Stainless steel aluminum work, we do. Um, the only time we really run a lot of jurisdictional work, jurisdictional work is interior fit outs when they consider the material be furniture. Mm -hmm. So when they sell the desk, they think the glass wall is furniture. In my opinion, it's not. It's glass. It should be our work. I don't touch someone's drywall. Mm -hmm. I don't touch the trim. It's not my work. I don't touch the ceilings. I don't touch the duct work. I don't touch the plumbing. It's not my work. Um, but when it comes to glass, <clears throat> it's pretty cut and dry. It should be our work. Um, uh, but like, it's really hard to get tied up with these furniture companies because usually the furniture is being done by the carpenter. And they usually take that as a furniture package because they're selling their own glass walls. So it's, it's a, it's a, it's, mm -hmm. It's heartbreaking when you walk on a job site and you're doing a pair of glass doors, you look over and see see another trade doing, you know, hundreds of feet of glass wall and they're considering furniture, but it's really not. You know? Okay. But, you know, you just roll the punches and keep going and just do what you got to do to put food on the table and pay the bills. And you're talking about some of that manufactured furniture wall system? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're referring to. There, there, there's, a, there's a handful of different manufactured types out there. Yeah. And like some of them just tie into a ceiling grid, like, mm -hmm. and there's no blocking yeah. in the head. Like that scares me. Mm -hmm. And that ceiling isn't tied in right. Like I, I've seen it where they clip in the ceiling grid. I, I'm not a big fan of that, but I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Yeah. Yeah. That ceiling definitely needs to be uh, braced and supported above mm -hmm. that grid for sure. Well, great, man. I really appreciate you, you coming on today. Do you have any, uh, anything else you want to, you want to share about your, about your company, about your business or any questions for me? Um, let me think. So, so I really appreciate you bringing me on. I really do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know I've seen your name and we've talked here and there and, uh, I'm glad we got to meet a couple weeks ago. You're yep. a really great guy. Um, I appreciate it. Um, so, so let me ask you a question. How, how are you doing? in this world of this craziness of COVID? Doing, 
doing good. I mean, we, we had downsized our company about a year and a half ago. So the timing of that actually was, was good, I guess, because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, we're, we're relatively lean now. So, you know, all things considered, you know, all good, you know, we're just being selective with, with what we go after now. And, and we have a custom home building division. My, my business partner, he, he's pretty much managing that and have a lot of nice custom home opportunities, which is really where, where we're going to grow because of the demand for all these new homes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, where he's located in the Point Pleasant area, there's a lot of New York people that moved out of the city and they're basically you know, picking, picking a lot, buying a lot and building, building new homes, you know, all all over, you know, the central North Jersey area. Uh, But that's been, that's been really good for us. That's been positive for sure. And I see that, I see that being positive for, for many years to come. Yeah. Are you guys seeing a lot of like, like office fit outs with COVID, like how to like uh, make them more uh, user friendly for keep people separated? Like building more walls, all that kind of stuff. For sure. I mean, Temple University, who I do a lot of business with, they they have a lot of that going on. Uh, I haven't done much with that personally yet, um, but but yeah, no, it's happening all over the higher education, you know, campuses. Um, but but I'm sure I'll I'm sure I'll be seeing seeing more of it in the office fit out world as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that coming more and more. Mm-hmm. Definitely, people want that separation. It used to be. Uh, open office space yeah i kind of see that maybe fading Mm -hmm. maybe not you know yeah and you're in fact the plexiglass i'm seeing that all over campus Uh, yeah yeah which which you know you touched on you're you're doing it all over the city we do a lot of work at drexel and i took over a thousand sheets wow made yeah do you work at what other campuses higher education are are you working at uh i do we do work at villanova Mm -hmm. we do work at drexel we do work at penn we do work at uh now it's jefferson university um delaware delaware county community college we do work for um uh that's basically about it for colleges and there isn't too many in the city i don't think we work for temple yet Mm -hmm. um a lot of like school districts hire us okay but, uh, but that's almost all the colleges in the city that i named so we i'm a big i'm a big, big advocate of meds eds and feds mm-hmm. you know? they always spend money and are always looking to improve uh their institutional if it's hospital work it's always there and school work's always there and uh government work is always there so mm-hmm. and most of those schools you named was more service oriented work correct service yeah but we yeah. do do new construction though we have done new construction there we've done a few fit outs at temple for oh. gcs okay I've done some fit outs at university i've done a lot of fit outs at university of penn mm-hmm. uh, uh gc work and drexel too as well excellent yeah excellent well man i really appreciate you coming on man it's 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 been a good one i appreciate yeah. you sharing your story i think this will yeah. this will help people you know that, that aren't sure what they want to do and and just goes to show, you know, tradesmen, you know, perfecting their craft and, and changing that into creating a business and uh, what you've done, man, it's, it's, uh, it's impressive. And I, I appreciate, appreciate you again, on. yeah, appreciate you sharing your story, man. Yeah. I'm always here. If anybody ever needs me, I work with a lot of different architects. Um, my phone's always on. If somebody, I work with, there's GCs that I don't even work for. They'll just call me and ask me a question. I'm always mm-hmm. here. My phone's always on. I'm, I'm a true advocate of, uh, it's just not synergy. It's everybody's in it together. Um, I am NACC certified, which is like a, um, we go through like an audit. It puts us through like a three day, like they come in, they go through all my books, they go through my safety policies and they make sure that we're the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm at the end of the day, I'm a true advocate of everybody everybody making the world. I'm not out to hurt nobody. I'm not out to put nobody out of business. I bid jobs. I bid them honestly, but I like to see everybody get work. I'm a true advocate of everybody getting along Mm -hmm. one world and just being happy. I'm huge on that. I love it, man. Love it. Do you want to share your website address and how we would get a hold of you? If someone wanted to contact you and, and what, and what, um, what, uh, platforms are you social media wise are you do you use mostly so i do have a full uh 
full time person who handles all my social media, Gene Volpe. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter. Um, there's so many of them. Uh, I almost got to open my phone. Look, Link- Facebook, LinkedIn. Li- yeah, yeah, LinkedIn. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, they can get a hold of me at uh, in the office at uh, 484 540 3117. Um, our email address is synergyglassanddoor.com. Um, and my email address is pat at synergyglassanddoor.com. And I'm always here. Even if other companies, I deal with other glass companies that uh, you know, me and you talk, I'm mm-hmm. buddies with Bert, and we, we bounce off, off each other all the time. Yeah. No, I love it, man. Thank you for sharing that. And again, thank you for coming on and have an Thanks awesome week, you. Pat, man. Definitely. I appreciate fun. it. Yeah, we'll get together soon for a drink. Uh, I'll see you soon, for sure. Thanks, Thanks. man. Take care. See you, bye.